start by asking Devashish to welcome Neera to the bouquet of flowers. Since I see several new faces here today, a word about Money Life Foundation. We are a not-for-profit organization involved in imparting financial literacy and advocacy for consumers of financial services. But having done this for over six years, one of the things that the feedback that we kept receiving from people is that why don't you cover other subjects as well? So this year we started what we call the practice of starting daily clinics. In fact, if you look at the board over there, you would see that from Monday to Friday we have have something happening here. Until now, we are very proud that Money Life Foundation is one of the fastest, not one of, it is the fastest growing NGO in the field of financial literacy. And But we used to do everything only on email. So those of us like you who know us for six years, you know that every time people said, okay, other than our seminars, when people wanted one-to-one -one interactions, we used to tell you no interactions on email only. All that has changed. So Monday we have, you know, uh, issues related to open spaces, solid waste disposal, how to file a PIL. On Tuesdays, all important issue of cooperative housing societies. I mean, all of us think we want that roof on our head, but we realize after we buy it that there are hundreds of issues. You have problems with management committees, builders. So you can come one to one and from 5 to 7, that's the time every day. Wednesdays is right to information, and Salish Gandhi, the former Central Information Commissioner, handles it. Thursdays, we have two very senior activists looking at consumer-related issues. How to file a consumer complaint, you have problems with anything other than finance, you can come, including insurance. And on Fridays, it is finance, which is again our core area. And on occasional days, we have the pr privilege of having people like Neeraj for a special talk which is very detailed on a subject which is based on feedback that we receive from the members who attend. So anytime you feel very strongly about something, write to us, fill up a feedback form or send us an email. If we can do it, if we can get an expert, if we can persuade someone like Neeraj to come along and say, okay, I will give you a talk, then we will try our best to handle that. Money Life has over 38,000 uh, members and membership is free. All you need to do is send an email to foundation at moneylife.in and you can become a member and start getting information on what we do fairly regularly. Now allow me to introduce Neeraj Punmir. Uh, you know, one of the things that is wonderful about having you here today, Neeraj, is that this is the second generation of our great supporters. His father, Vimal Punmir, has done wonderful seminars for us on wills and other issues. And uh, the law firm that they uh, run is an expert in real estate related issues. And uh, he's a chip of the old block. So the, when I said, will you do a seminar on wills, he very, very readily agreed. Uh, Tiraj himself, as you know, before you came here as an advocate, but other than the core areas of realty and, you know, realty along with it doesn't happen without understanding wills. So wills is a core area that they do. He's also a practitioner in income tax and cervix tax related issues. He's, of course, uh, done a lot of wills and drafted uh, all kinds of legal do documents, including wills. He's handled issues related to income tax with all the authorities and the series of them I'm sure he has to deal with. He's also associated with ICICI Prudential Life Insurance for the past 10 years, and he is a platinum advisor where ICICI Insurance is concerned. With these few words, I hand the mic to Neeraj. Thank you. Uh, good evening uh, everyone around here and uh, uh, first and foremost I must take this opportunity to thank ma'am basically for inviting me here and giving me an opportunity. Uh, in my few years of practice when we have drafted many wills and all that I came across when people come to me draft and there is a lot of questions actually that uh, sometimes you realize that uh, what needs to be known, what does not need to be known. And based on this understanding, my practical experience, the compilation, what we have prepared today, probably I would like to run down with few basic concepts before we come on to a situation where we want to know basically what happens when there is no will actually. Uh, ideally speaking, there shouldn't be a situation when there is no will. 
but then there are situations when there is no will and then all the other aspects comes into picture so basically i would without any wasting further time i'll we'll start off with my presentation right now yeah and uh, okay uh, we all know basically what a will is all about a basic concepts of will are known by everyone actually it's a documentation where a person writes down his intention as to how his properties will devolve distributed after his death however a will how it is to be drafted how it should go about we will come on this particular thing slide by slide in this case right? okay uh, the first slide what i would be uh, saying a will is a valid document that allows you to choose who gets your property when you are no longer there any person who is not a minor can make a will you can only bequeath what belongs to you naturally you cannot bequeath something which does not belongs to you we all know that but a will has a certain legal definition one needs to understand like what is testator what is legatee i'll come back to this right now a testator person who prepares a will a person who makes a will is called a testator a legatee is a person who gets something in the will is called a legatee codicil a codicil codicil basically what what it means once i make a will and after that i want to change certain contents of the will or add certain more things into the will then i write it down by virtue of an codicil and that basically will take care of my other thing for example if after making one particular will i have one more for new asset new assets which i may have got which i would like to devolve upon to take care in my will also secondly in my original will i may have bequeathed some assets to some of my legal heir now with the change of circumstances i want to change that then i will draw a separate codicil to which will be annexed to the original will and then it will take care of those changes which takes place right executor executor basically means what a person in a will has to ensure that when i am no longer around there should be some one person who will give effect to the will who will execute the will who will take the responsibility of obtaining the probate of the will who will undertake the responsibility of how the asset should be distributed among the legal heir so it is very very important a person who appoints an executor what is the credentials of the person who he should be ideally speaking definitely we will not appoint in tom dick and harry to be an executor of the will it is someone whom you trust who is educated enough who is knowledgeable enough who understands law little better and that is a person who should ideally be appointed as an executor administrator now administrator basically comes into picture when there is no executor there happens to be a scenario in a will where a person makes a will devolves all his assets but he forgets to appoint an executor or maybe a situation arises where an executor after getting appointed he says no i will not act as an executor he refuses to act as an executor for whatever reasons it could be or maybe he dies in that scenario the court the competent court will decide as to who will become the administrator of the will and the work which an executor was supposed to do an administrator will come into picture as far as that is concerned right who can make a will which also means who cannot make a will naturally we all know a person who makes a will has to be of sound mind he should know what he is writing in the will what are his assets what are his liabilities whom he want to devolve upon subsequent to his death of course a corporate bodies cannot make a will by virtue of very logical the corporate bodies are not entity individual entity so they cannot make a will though they may be a beneficiary from the will minor of course cannot make a will why to make a will in spite of the fact that people know one should make a will yet people don't make a will at most of the times maybe out of various reasons we will make it then there and all that but subsequent situation has come into picture when we have addressed lot of queries or lot of cases where will was not there and how the property subsequently got devolved after that why should a person make a will basically in today's time when we see even a middle class family must have accumulated assets comprising of immobile properties movable properties comprising of investments and fixed deposits mutual funds pensions and lot of other things the moment you accumulate wealth more then the tension arises how to distribute the wealth 
सपोज वेन आई एम नो लॉन्गर अराउंड हाउ द विल हाउ द प्रॉपर्टी विल बी गिवन टू माई लीगल हेयर एंड ऑल दैट सो दैट इज वर अ पर्सन शुड अंडरस्टैंड द इम्पॉर्टेंस दैट बिफोर आई डाई इफ आई राइट इट इन अ मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट फॉर्म giving the descriptions of my property what i have accumulated over my lifetime who are my legal heirs what are my properties movable and immovable and after my demise how this property should go to which legal heir in what proportion in what capacity and that is very important that a will should be made one more reason if the will is not made then probably laws of the land will take into picture now the laws of the land will not distinguish between one legal heir and the other legal heir but as a person who is making a will he may know his family better of which legal heir needs more support which legal heir does not need more support who is worthy enough who is not worthy who was with me who was not with me and lot of a senior citizens or senior generation will agree and admit as what i have experienced when i attend to my clients that lot of time they have this confusion ke in today's complex social scenario where relationships are not the way they used to be few years back the question comes that whom should i give what there may be a situation where when as two son one son has been absconding one son did not was on talking terms naturally father will not like to give the property to them there could be a more genuine scenario where out of two sons or siblings one needs a special attention because he is a lunatic or he is not in a good state of health or he is in a not good frame of mind and as a father as a parents know that tomorrow future may he will require a better support as compared to the other legal other child who is already well settled a will is a document which will enable to address those queries address those concerns in absence of the will the court will not distinguish between that the laws of the land which is called the succession act or the hindu act or muhammadan law or the christian act or whatever will come into picture and accordingly the properties will be distributed that's a different story altogether but right now when we say why to make a will yes will needs to be made for so and so reasons and all that uh more important suppose so happen there is a minor children are involved the parents have expired but if they made a will they can create a trust by virtue of the will such trust can be created for the benefit of the minor so that some person who is administering the trust will take care of the upbringing of the minor when the trust will be created and all that so a person can also create a trust by virtue of the will and decide as to how it will be there as i said when there is no will what happens i will come to this topic later on but just for as for the sake of brevity i would like to run through it when there is no will basically it's called intestate succession intestate succession when a person dies without making a will it is called intestate then the laws of the land comes into picture hindu muslim christians jain sikh they all are governed by the respective religion and the laws codified accordingly so hindu will be governed by hindu succession act uh christians will be governed by indian succession act parsis have their own succession laws muslims have their own succession laws and shias and sunnis and so and so every religion based on their laws have a demarcation as to what constitutes legal heir how the property is to be devolved how it is to be distributed and after obtaining the succession certificate and everything and all then the court the competent court will decide how the property assets should be devolving upon those in absence when there is no will so one more reason of course there should be a will and people should make a will and all that again there are different kinds of will there are around 8 to 9 kind of will basically more or less uh, not many will comes into picture in day to day we don't come across so many different kind of wills and all that generally what we understand is that a person makes a will in general this is my name these are my legal heirs these are the properties what i have got and i want to distribute this properties by virtue when that will comes into picture and this is to be distributed in so and so fashion so and so way but for the sake of academic interest there are different different kinds of will the very name suggests privileged and unprivileged will a unprivileged will or privileged privileged basically will generally they should be in writing but then there are circumstances where people sort of govern when they can make an oral will also and oral will also will be given effect to take an example of soldier fighting in a war probably he will not have the resources to write a will and all that so at that time or a person on the marine uh, duty and all that they are given the privilege of giving an oral will wherein they can 
say that okay this property should go to this person of course after complying with the other aspects of that something called conditional and contingent will the very name suggests conditional that is on happening of certain conditions the will will come into picture or on happening of certain contingency the will will come into picture if both these things do not happen then the will will not come into picture it will not be affected and all that we have joint wills also where two people make a joint will when husbands and wife make a joint will ideally not really advisable but still there are situations when joint wills comes into picture a will executed by two or more testators mutual wills duplicate wills concurrent wills concurrent wills basically means a person for the sake of brevity make two wills suppose he has two properties in two different countries he would like to dispose of the property in a foreign country by a different will and a property in indian country by a different will and that we call a concurrent wills something called sham will now what is sham will actually the very word sham basically says sham bogus or whatever we call it it says that any document executed to give a testamentary execution but which was not intended to give a testamentary exec execution wherein the intention is very important when we say a will it is the intention of the person that i am writing something which should be given effect to after my death so any document which do gives a content in form of a will but basically which do not give the intentions will be a sham will and then we come last holographic will the holographic will basically means a will in writing today we see wills are typed in proper language they are registered and all that but there was a time when people used to just write on the piece of paper okay okay this is the property i had this should go to this this share should go. even those kind of wills definitely are given effect to and they are accepted though not advisable in today's time and scenario so these are kind of will basically we are talking about sorry basic requirement generally when a people come to us to draft a will we straight away give them a one cyclosal sheet because a will should contain everything which is required in the proper format and a proper way we ask them give us the name it should give your proper name your age your residential address it should give the details of your all your properties comprising of your movable and immovable take an example if it is an immovable property then in so and so building flat number so and so admiring area so and so belongs to me share certificate details and all that but any plot of land should give a proper description what is the area of the plot what is the description of the plot where it is located if i have certain fixed deposits then i also should mention the fixed deposits in so and so bank mutual funds with so and so and this list has to be enumerated in a very elaborate fashion after that what properties will go to which legal heir should be given properly so this information is very important in order to ensure that a will reflects the truest intention of the person making a will most important merely preparing a will signing a will is not important the will should be witnessed by two witness who should ideally sign in presence of each other and who should also witness the person signing the will so tomorrow a question should not arise or dispute should not arise that a will was fraudulently obtained was wrongly obtained was a fraud or whatever where you can prove okay two witnesses were there they have signed it in their presence they have also seen the person making the will signing it in presence and so that is the way it is important two witnesses are more important then i come back to think some basic facts unlike in other legal documentation when in a proper format or proper way is adhered to will is one document where there is no proper format is required a person can write anything though in today's complex time as a legal advisor we always say that uh, a will should also be written in a proper format describing each and every aspects of the will as per requirement but nevertheless there has been a situation where the wills are written in just plain handwriting so basically the the the, the law says that there is no proper format of the will in a plain writing in a simple language if you are able to express your intention that also would be accepted it can be on a plain paper and handwritten will is called a holograph will as already pointed out earlier then no stamp duty is payable on the will no registration is required though highly 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 recommended a registration a document basically gives a stamp of approval that the government is witness to the transaction 
and so a will ideally should be registered and i hope and i understand today's people are definitely they make a mail and all that they don't they do get it registered and all that one more thing once a will is prepared a will can also be revoked taking into account accommodating or incorporating the subsequent changes which have been made a person may have made a will at the age of 60 when he may have a certain set of the assets which may want to dispose of if he expires or something but at the age of 70 he may again want to change the will so he will basically revoke the earlier will and the latest will will stand as a will which will come into picture which will be legal and binding one advice would be that when a new will comes into picture it has to mention the testator the person making the will should mention that i revoke all my earlier will and codicils if any this will remove any ambiguity which may arise in future if tomorrow there are two or three wills are there then the latest will and which most important which is registered will will give an effect to which will be binding which will be also accepted in the competent court of law and all that it always says the will can be revoked and updated as many number of times it is the last will which counts it also mentions a will can be updated through a codicil as i always po I pointed out codicil basically means when a will you want to make certain changes not all together but add certain things it should be reduced in writing in the form of codicil a codicil is annexed to the original will copy and it is called and a person can always make a codicil at any point of time or one can contain a residual clause to cover what was not specifically mentioned or acquired later. As I said, there may be a time when I new properties acquired, new investments are acquired, or investments are done away with. So at that time, a residual clause can be added and it can be formed part of the will. Who can be an executor? I pointed out earlier that an executor should be a person of someone who can be trusted, who a trusted or had a faith who is knowledgeable person who had a little bit knowledge of the law and was capable to execute the will subsequent to the demise it says an executor must be clearly identified to avoid an ambiguity or a confusion so in the will it should be mentioned that i appoint this so and so person who is related to me either who could be an outsider person to be an executor of the will and subsequent to my demise he will pay off my debt liabilities and all that and subsequent there will ensure the distribution of the asset to the rightful legal heirs i mentioned the last slide don't be casual about selecting an executor what i meant basically was that it should not be any tom dick and harry It should be a person whom you can trust and as a result it's very important that an executor should be a person who who should really be someone who you can really believe that he will give effect to the will otherwise the purpose is not served nominations why this nomination word is important to discuss because in my personal experience where i've come across few instances where a client is asking me a question Okay, Neeraj sir, we have already made a nomination in the society. Do I need to make a will? So basically, people are thinking a nomination tantamounts to the ownership. Actually, it is not. A will is a different thing. A nomination is a different thing. A nomination basically means a right to receive, whereas a will means a right to own. Nomination is made. So to ensure that in my absence, there is a proper channel of communication with the respective authorities, specifically when it comes to cooperative housing societies. We may be aware that in cooperative housing societies, the original member of the society, he makes a nomination. My so-and-so associate member, so-and-so family members, I'm nominating them. Subsequent to the demise, a nominee makes an application to the society that look my father expired or so and so person expired on so and so date this is a copy of the death certificate you kindly transfer the share certificate in my name the society then insists a copy of the will okay, bhai, you are a nominee we can understand but whether you are a legal heir also and whether your father or your mother wanted to give transfer the share certificate in your name now that is where will comes into picture when a will proper demarcation is given the so and so property was given to so and so legal heir and the will comes into picture nomination comes into picture then the society insists on copy of the will that certificate and if the need arises probate of the will 
so basically nomination means what it means a right to receive but will is a right to own and will will always prevail over the nomination i would further also invite okay who cannot nominate of course an individual can nominate but an huf a firm a company cannot make nominations very logically a nominee also cannot nominate persons holding assets in a representative capacity also cannot nominate who cannot nominate yes i pointed out who can be a nominee who can be a nominee a nominee could be any adult or even a minor a minor of course has to be represented by a guardian a relative or a friend or a well wisher can also be a nominee and need not be a blood relative also will and nomination as i said that there is a difference between the two terminologies and why it is important to basically know what is the difference between that nomination is not a will nomination is a right to receive where is a will is a right to own because all the legal heir will have equal right in the property so a person who has been nominated in a cooperative housing society for an example cannot stake a claim in the society ke look my parents expired i was nominated and so please transfer the share certificate and remain i am the rightful owner no you are not the rightful owner you will just have the right to represent the member or receive any money but you are liable to distribute in the legal heir to among the legal heirs or rightful legal heir so it is generally said when you make a will and if you are devolving any particular asset to any particular legal heir ideally he should also be made a nominee in the records so there there is a common thing and then things there is no there, there is no scope of dispute as in such when an authority has to transfer the shares or the mutual funds or the fixed deposits or anything to your name or the legal heir when the nominee in the legal heir remains one and the same that should not be a problem with that nominee acts as a trustee and provisions of the will always prevail over the nomination it is advisable to have same person as a nominee and a beneficiary in the will to prevent any future disputes now these slides what we have prepared right now and these points what i am putting basically they are based on our own personal experiences when we come across dealing with the clients various questions are raised at point of time so then we make a okay this was also there this also needs to be known this also need to be incorporated and all that so we have not well in elaborate we are not elaborated further but we are ensuring that the right thing comes across and basically it is understood in the sense it is made to be uh, reflected you know now what happens when there is no will okay nomination in a cooperative housing society yeah okay uh, is a will necessary when a nomination formality has been completed in the case of cooperative housing society i repeat once again what i said earlier answer is yes a nominee is only a trustee and not the owner of the assets he is only a caretaker of your assets a nominee will only hold your asset as a trustee and will be legally bound to transfer it to the rightful legal heir there has been a situation which has come into picture wherein father expired nomination was made no will was prepared when the legal heir made an application to the society ke look my father expired and the i was the nomination and please transfer the share certificate to society issues a number of documentation before they take a call whether to really transfer the share certificate in their name or not among one important documentation is probate of the will i will come to the probate of the will later on but probate is an integral part of my will where there is any devolvement of an immovable property probate comes into picture probate so i'll come into the next slide but just for the sake of brevity i mentioned out here a society cannot decide on the succession it is only determines who will deal with the society after the members death so basically society does not have the right to decide who is the legal heir or who is the owner of the property neither they have the authority to decide but by virtue of the say four corners of the bylaws then they have to ensure that the right person comes on record wherein between the society and the member there should be some person who can deal with the society and all that what happens when there is no will
this is the situation where we come across okay, we discuss right now why will should be made what kind what types of will are all about what are the legal requirement of the will why should one person make a will what are the format of the will whether stamp duty registration every aspect is we have pointed out but there is a situation still where the litigation a litigation arises when there is no will actually or maybe in absence or when there is a will also but when the will is contested but still when there is no will the probability of the litigation is much more higher when there are disputes between the legal heirs now when there is a when the person dies without making a will it is called intestate succession when the property belonging to the person how it will devolve among the legal heir will depend upon to which sect of the law belonging to the religion they belong to a hindu it will be governed by a hindu succession act a christian will be governed by a indian succession act mohammedans have their own muslim personal law parses are governed by their own law and accordingly each individual law depending on the religion they have demarcated the legal hair basically that what constitutes legal hair what are the class 1 legal hair what are the class 2 legal hair and how the property in which proportion in which ratio will get devolved in respect in accordance with those personal laws basically in absence of the will the property gets devolved in legal hair now what is the legal hair basically legal hair means the closest living relative we all understand in normal parlance father his son his son son wife they all are legal hair in every personal law which we have not elaborated because it's a different Uh, subject not different subject but probably it will take a different uh, uh, thing into a picture but a legal heir in a different laws are bifurcated into class 1 class 2 so class 1 will give the description who will come into class 1 legal heir wherein the property has to be distributed as per the class 1 legal heir after obtaining the succession certificate or after obtaining the letter of administration or whatever If there is no class one legal heir, then the class two legal heir comes into picture, which is a grandfather and things and all that. And in that, accordingly, the property will get devolved as per the class two legal heir. Similarly, in Indian Succession Act, which governs Christians and Mohammedan personal law, different different legal heirs are governing different different people and all that. And that is the way the property gets devolved according to their respective legal heir. So. i would read out the definition of succession certificate out here what is succession certificate basically a succession certificate under the indian succession act is a document that gives authority to the person who obtains it to represent the deceased for the purpose of collecting the debt and securities due to him or payable in his name whenever when there is no will then succession certificate comes into picture wherein a person has to make an application in the competent court of a competent jurisdiction that look this person expired he did not have a will there are the assets which needs to be distributed among the legal heir and so abiding by the protocols of the law we are making an application for the succession certificate the court basically has a certain process how a succession certificate is granted naturally it follows an application has to be made an application has to be supported by certain documentation like giving the details who is the testator when he died time of death what are the legal heirs once this application is made the court will take its own time to invite objections by issuing the notifications Okay, look, this application has come to us. We are in the process of issuing a succession certificate in so and so case. If any Keith or Kin has any objections to the same, you kindly file your objections within a span of forty-five days or so, so that we can take a call on that. If there are objections, say for example, when there are legal heirs, there are disputes among the properties and all, then someone may take a claim. Okay, we don't want this and we don't want that. In that case, the court will hear the disputes and it may take its time to pass an order. But assuming there are no disputes, no objections and all that, then within a course of 40-45 days, when the objections or no objections are received, the court will issue a certificate to the effect. 
and it will issue the succession certificate. The succession certificate basically in layman, I can say it's a license wherein after the demise of the person, the person who has obtained the succession certificate has right to dispose of the property. It says how the application has to be made for succession certificate. Process to be followed means approach a distinct co co court of competent jurisdiction either a district court or a high court now it mentioned district court or a high court why is this difference has come in because when there is a development or distribution of an immovable property or a property which has got a high value depending on the category of the value it will be decided whether a district court will preside over this application of succession certificate or a high court will come into picture and accordingly it will be all will be taken and after following all the compliances and all a succession certificate is issued <laughs> the petition of making an application which is called a petition should consist of following brief information as called like what is the relation of the petitioner petitioner basically means a person who makes an application for the succession certificate he will be called a petitioner now he has to explain basically what is the relation who are the other surviving legal heirs of the person what was the time date and place of the death of the person uh, that certificate of course mandatory to be enclosed along with the petitions the court after examining the petition will issue notifications and certificate of the petition is passed on to order and it passes an order to issue a succession certificate to the petitioner. There is a fees associated to obtain a succession certificate also. The fees depends on the value of the property in a certain percentage which is predetermined in the laws or whatever. It is around say 3% of the value of the property will be charged upfront, including the lawyer's fees and all that to obtain a succession certificate. Now, how long does the succession certificate takes? Generally, it takes around 3 to 4 months if there is no disputes or no objections. But of course, right, logically says that if, if there is some objection, then probably the objection will be heard out, they will be discussed, they will be probed. And then subsequent to that, it will take five to seven months to obtain a succession certificate. And once the succession certificate is issued, then probably the property a subsequent action on the part of the petitioner to distribute among the legal heir will be undertaken. And so succession certificate is mandatory. Yes, when there is no will and all the procedures has to be followed at that point of time. Now, one important thing one needs to understand the same way which I said will and nomination. Most people think that a succession certificate is obtained then a person is the rightful owner of the deceased person's properties. This is not true. A succession certificate allows the persons to act exactly similar to how a nominee would act. This means that a petitioner or a person who has obtained a succession certificate cannot presume that because I have obtained the succession certificate, because the right has been given to me to deal with the properties, I have become the owner of the property. No, not at all. He stands in the same position as a nominee. And as I said, nominee is a right to receive, will is a right to own. In a similar parlance, the petitioner or the person who made an application to obtain a succession certificate is not an owner of the property. He has only been given the right by the competent court to distribute or dispose or deal with the properties and distribute among the rightful legal heir and which, which he has to do. So he is not the owner. One more aspect, succession certificate, whether once issued, can it be revoked? Yes, there are certain criteria and factors. Uh, which is not covered in the slide, I would like to come on it. If the succession certificate it is proved in the competent court, the certificate was obtained fraudulently or it becomes useless and inoperative for any X, Y, Z reasons or a decree or order of other competent court was passed which makes this whole succession certificate null and void or it is against an order of district judge or any competent court in that event the succession <coughs> certificate which is issued can be revoked after having dealt with succession certificate I would like to come back to the probate of the will because 
सक्सेशन सर्टिफिकेट कम्स इन टू पिक्चर वैन देर इज नो विल प्रोबेट कम्स इन टू पिक्चर वैन देर इज अ विल प्रोबेट अगेन बिफोर एक्सप्लेनिंग आई वुड लाइक टू रीड आउट वॉट एग्जैक्टली द प्रोबेट इज ऑल अबाउट वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन प्रोबेट बेसिकली मीन्स वॉट इट इज अ लीगल प्रोसेस वेर इन द कोर्ट सर्टिफाइज द ऑथेंटिसिटी ऑफ द विल example when we enter into our purchase sale of the immovable transaction immovable property sale agreement we go to the registrar office get it registered earlier registration was not compulsory because it is a transfer of share not transfer of property but still we register the documentation why because when you register the documents it gives a sanctity the stamp of the government that we are witness to the transaction and this is a genuine transaction similarly when a will comes into effect after the death of the person and when a will deals with transmission of the immovable property in that case probate is required to be obtained probate basically means a simple language a court will certify that this will is genuine is proper and should be given effect to again there is a process and a procedure to obtain a probate which i will come into it a probate is simply to get a copy of the will validated by the court or to get the seal of the court on contents of the will it is required only in the presidency states of bombay chennai kolkata and only for immovable property generally probate of the will is a more acceptable document acceptance of the will as i pointed out in case of cooperative housing society when there is an application to transfer the share certificate in the name of the nominee or a legal heir the societies are very very they don't want to get into legal dispute tomorrow society transfers the share certificate in the name of the person who made the application by virtue of filing respective forms and everything and all and suddenly after some few months a second legal heir comes into picture because of dispute ke how could the society transfer the share certificate in the name of the person why didn't you obtain a probate why did you call for the probate in that scenario society takes generally safeguards their interest wherein they do not want to get into any litigation embroil into legal controversy so they follow certain compliances look sir we want certain documentation probate is one of the documents now probate though very important document but in one example when one of the cases i came across where obtaining a probate was also a, a very difficult thing for my client it so happened that two brothers were not on a talking terms subsequent to the demise of the father when there was a will also the in the will the property was devolved into one brother the brother made an application to the society ke looks as per this will i am the owner now and you please transfer the share certificate in my name the other brother straight away wrote a letter to the society this is a case which uh, came across me in 4 months back actually the other brother wrote a letter to the society ke looks sir i am also a legal heir i am challenging challenging the will and so please do not transfer the share certificate in name of my brother you insist on the will Uh, sorry i insist on the probate i'm sorry insist on the probate probate of the will now here the society became very cautious he says look please sort your disputes and all that we will not transfer the share certificate till date you obtain the probate of the will because once a probate is obtained then everything is crystal clear now why this brother did not want to go for the probate of the will he says look sir i know my intentions of my brother very clear the moment i apply for the probate of the will there is a process to be followed like we obtain succession certificate in probate after application is made a notice will be issued objections will be invited the moment objections are invited the court has to invite objections to a legal newspaper and things like that it in a time frame someone has to give the objection now my brother will write a letter to the court ke i challenge this will am i two years are gone So there is a situation wherein obtaining a probate is also, but this is this is, uh, but still that doesn't takes away the fact that probate of the will needs to be obtained. Assuming all the factors remaining, there are no disputes and everything falls in place, and probate is a, wonder, a document one needs to go for, especially when there are immovable properties. So, I would read out basically that probate is a legal process in which a court certifies the authenticity of the will. It establishes the legal character of the executor. to implement the will and to the validity of the will probate can only be granted only to the executor appointed by the will so a probate of the will 
generally is advisable also but of course it involves a certain cost so one has to basically uh, weigh the facts and circumstances before taking a call as to a probate should be taken or not to be taken there has been a scenario when a society has transferred the share certificate in the name of the rightful person in absence of probate also because there was no dispute in such situation society insists look sir you have four legal heirs and we know everyone we know there is no dispute but for the sake of convenience please obtain a no objection certificate from the other legal heirs wherein they will relinquish their right and issue no objection ke look i do not have any objection when my brother so and so the share certificate is transferred in his or her name and that is why probate may not be required but in all the other cases people are very cautious authorities are cautious and they insist on probate of the will again a probate there's a procedure the way we apply for succession certificate probate also is to be obtained in a particular way an application has to be made in the court of a competent jurisdiction furnish the documents as required by the competent court in a prescribed format like copy of the death certificate copy of the will what are the legal heirs proof of the id of the testator and all the basic documentation which is part and parcel of my application what i would make in a court and all that a proof that the will was executed and it was the last will notification subsequent to this application the court will issue a notification inviting any objections as i pointed out there is a payment of the fee which is a percentage of the property depending on the value of the property but subject to the maximum ceiling of 75000 and this is the way the probate is granted issued in a certain span of few months and all and then it can be taken care of now there are specific consequences if the will is not probated what will be the legal consequences if the will is not probated a simple line i would read out which explains what exactly are the consequences if the will which is required to be probated under the act if not probated it has no legal sanctity and a binding force so in today's complex time what we are living in and peculiar situation arises in each and every case if we follow the systematic protocol then probably a probate of the will is always advisable should be obtained of course with all the other factors assuming are in proper shape and all that now after having discussed succession certificate and probate probably it will be futile to explain that what is the difference between succession certificate and a probate succession certificate comes into picture when there is no will probate comes into picture when there is a will now when there is when there is no will apart from succession certificate then a letter of administration may also be required now what is letter of administration a letter of administration is issued by a competent court issued by a competent court competent authority who appoints the administrator to dispose of the property of the person if it is required when now in a will when there is a will there is an executor but suppose in a scenario where an executor is not appointed in the will or executor refuses to act or the executor dies in that case what happens because the rule is that executor of the will has to apply for the probate but when executor was not there or he refused to act or he died in that scenario the court will appoint an administrator by virtue of a letter of administration i will read out this thing letter of administration is issued by a competent authority and appoints the administrator to dispose of the property of the person it is required when the testator has failed to appoint an executor under a will will was there but executor was not appointed or when the executor appointed under a will refuses to act there may be a situation where an executor does not want to act to execute the will for various personal reasons and all that or when the executor has died before or after proving the will but before the administration of the asset in that scenario a letter of administration is issued by the competent <coughs> court and the job what was to be done by the executor will be done by the administrator 
again to obtain a letter of administration there are certain requirement an application has to be made the time and that topic testator when he died that certificate all the legal has and everything and, a, and the compliance is what has followed in the case of succession certificate or a probate would also be followed in the letter of administration also so these are the scenario which comes into picture when there is no will of course probate comes into picture when there is a will but there is a scenario when also probate is there but executor is not there and that's in, a, in, in that case is letter of administration comes into picture now, apart from that there is a situation when they say okay, is it really necessary to go to the court to address the grievances or the, uh, the disputes and all that we generally advise our client to come to a settlement because whenever a person dies immobile properties are there which property will go to which legal heir which legal heir would want which property so we generally work out a situation where we say okay, look sir as per all the assets what has come into picture if there is a mutual settlement between the legal heir and if you agree on the terms that mutual understanding is there then you can enter into a different instruments wherein the property can be devolved to a respective legal heir by virtue of these instruments a gift deed is one of them a release deed or right of relinquishment is one of them or a transmission deed wherein one person will purchase the share of the other person comes into picture but depending on facts to facts and circumstances in each to each case that will come into picture not in all the sundry cases and all that now, to further just uh, elaborate i would read out often when a person dies in estate the legal heirs have to decide how to mutually distribute the assets of the deceased going to the court is the least productive way negotiation is better and the courts are best approached only in case of the denial of the one's right only when there is a dispute one should approach the court and all that the following acts may be done to have a property which is jointly owned by many legal heirs the following acts basically what as i said the heirs may execute a gift deed wherein one or more of them gifting away their share in interest or the heirs may execute a release deed in favor of the other legal heir or one or more of the heirs may purchase the other shares or interest in the said property this way in a mutually acceptable way the legal heir the family members would come to a conclusion ke look sir these are all the properties and we would have an understanding between ourselves this is a property we devolve according to the so and so thing and we would not like to go to the court and all and try to devolve or take the share with this particular mechanism of course after consultation with your solicitors lawyers and all that and after virtue of a right instrument where a gift deed needs to be prepared a gift deed has to come into picture right of release or relinquishment right of release basically i release my right in so and so property in favor of so and so brother or relinquish my right so and why these instruments are prepared basically so that in future to ensure that there is no dispute once a family settlement has come into picture when this transmissions have taken place shares have been purchased it has been gifted and all then there should not be any scope of further disputes coming in later stage at that point of time so apparently in this slide basically i've tried covering will various aspects of will what happens when a will is there what happens when a will is not there and what act comes into picture now in my compilation there are certain faqs what we had prepared which is prepared based on the basis of the actual questions what people clients used to raise